Hi. Good, there's people. I like it. That's good. All right, so I'm Chris. I wanted to start by thanking all of the people here who put on this conference for us, right? Um, more than anything, it's places like this where we get to thrive, we get to find new ideas, we get inspired. Um, I, I've already completely wanted to change my entire talk a couple times from watching these people. Um, so now you're gonna have to deal with me wrestling my own thoughts while I'm standing here. Um, I wanna thank you guys for being you know, so attentive and watching PowerPoint, because God, that's really fun, isn't it? Um, you know, when, when I got nominated to do this from my friend Ashley, who's sitting over there, uh, I was really, really excited, and then I was scared to death. Because I was like, well, I'm really used to ranting in front of my InfoSec crowd, right? I can have a thousand people in the room, and there's a whole bunch of hackers that I'm used to talking to. And now I'm like, wait a second, I have to talk to real people. And I realized that, you know, the agoraphobia of my industry was starting to manifest itself in me. So I was like, all right, all right, go back to the basics, right? Try and explain how I got to where I am. So capricious youth, right? That's me. That's who I was. Um, that's how I figured out my life, is just trying to fly through it, because I thought I could. And any time I saw a red button, or any button at all, I pushed it. Because who doesn't like pushing buttons? It's super fun. It's so much fun that I actually grew up and I made a career of pushing buttons. You know, people can call me whatever you want to call me, but that's what I do. I push buttons for a living just to see what it does. And it's real fun. Um, I can give you the standard shock and awe war stories of how last week we were running around trying to steal a jet from a runway and could successfully do it a couple different ways, or what computers we could hack into, but it's more interesting to me to think back of, you know, where did I start and how did I get to some of the places I was in, and we didn't have the internet when I was young. We just had a whole bunch of computers you could dial into. We had little magazines that you could read and figure out how to tap the phone line a couple times and try and get a free collect call, right? I wasn't really interested in what I could break into. I was interested in what stuff was, but I was even more interested in what it could be. You know, I want to repurpose everything. Anything that I had in my room would get taken apart. It didn't necessarily work out for my social life because I got grounded a whole lot for that. But I really wanted to play with all that stuff. How does this work? I don't know. Open it up and be like, oop, I broke it. That sucks. You know? <laughs> and, and I had to learn how to fix them at the same time. And, and that's really part of that kind of hacker inside of me. You know, a lot of these people use this word hacker, right? If you type in hacker in Google, it's the most depressing thing in the world to me. <laughs> it's so depressing. First off, none of us sit behind our computer in a ski mask. Fact. No hacker ever wears ski masks when they're hacking. That shit is hot. We don't do that. We don't, I mean, yes, we wear hoodies, but we don't keep them up. Like, how are you going to drink Mountain Dew and sit at a console for 15 hours when you got a freaking hoodie on? Plus, then your headphones get messed up and you got to listen to techno music because you're a hacker, right? No Chopin for me, it's only rave music. I want people to respect real hackers, right? I want to take some of the hackers that I see in the world, right? These are the people who are hackers. These are the people who are out there going, yeah, it's cute that you do it that way with that thing, but I can turn this into a renewable source of energy for the entire world. You're just using it for what? Oh, powering the battery of your tank. That's cool. I'm going to make it a better place. And, th and that's what we try and do, right? We try and become like the meme cat internet defenders of the world. Taking our skills that we had from our beautiful, capricious youth of, um, I can't call it breaking into things because there weren't laws around that then, but we were investigating the ability to attain information from particular systems that had open authentications. Um, <laughs> thank you, lawyer. Uh, <laughs> But you know, in order to do that, we had to see the world. I didn't know much outside of my office that I wasn't supposed to get into that I eventually had to learn how to pick locks so I could get into the office to play with the computer that my stepdad had so that he could do word processing stuff. I was like, I can look at porn. I can do all sorts of cool things, <laughs> you know? So 
I had to find my way around the industry to do this. And, and you know, I, I worked at a law firm so that I could see what it was like for the people that were getting attacked. I worked at a big, giant carrier so I could see what it was like to run the highways that have all this stuff going on in it and all this cool technology. And then I was like, well, I could probably have a bigger effect if I could actually work at the companies that audited the big companies because then I get the trickle down. And then I was like, well, wait a second, what if I worked at a company like I was working at Alltech where I could be a resource that worked for the auditors, that worked for the people that people bought stuff from? I could really get a big picture of it. And what I found when I made my company is that none of those views really helped the world. They helped me go around and speak and you know, break my ankle in foreign countries and meet people from all over the world. Sure, that's neat. But you know, what really happened is I need to find out, and what I did find out was that you have to inspire action in people for this stuff to change. Me being Mr. Cool Hacker does nothing for the world. It really doesn't. It doesn't even help the world. If anything, the best thing I can do is give you a laugh. Or you know, dox somebody, and then you could be like, oh, he's a hero, and then I'll be like, no, I'm a traitor. I just didn't do what I said I was going to do. But more that I can do to inspire people to learn, the more that I can do to inspire people to be aware of what's going on, that's how I found that it's starting to work. You know, 15 years into this, and I'm now starting to find my pace. So I wanted to share kind of some of the lessons that are outside of what the normal security people will say to you. You know, most security companies out there, most uh, industry moffats, whatever you're going to call them, they spread the fear and gloom, right? To them, the sky is falling all the time, and it's your job to block the falling sky with piles of money buying crap, because it's gonna protect you. Even though we're worse every single year, we lose more money every single year. I mean, this year alone, we've already lost 174 million credit card numbers. That sucks. Like, we just suck at it. And, and I think that, you know, back to the, like, you know, 12-step program, like, we just need to understand that we suck and, like, be ready to move on. <laughs> right? Like, we have to admit, hey, we suck. Okay, somebody help us out. And, and one of the things that I look at when, when I figure out some of the path of this is that security isn't something you could buy. It's a feeling. I mean, when you go to Oxford, and you ask Oxford Dictionary by typing it into the web browser, because that's what we all do, or our little phones, it tells us it's a feeling, yet we keep putting money into it like it's a thing, right? Security isn't a thing. No matter how you cut it, it's how you feel. Oh, well, the crash test dummy didn't break its neck when the Mercedes ran into a brick wall at 80 miles an hour. I'm safe. Really? Are you a crash test dummy? No. I would say that it's never been tested with you, then. And then they're like, ah, oh, you're right. But it's supposed to be like me, but it's nothing like you, <laughs> right? And, and we need to kind of get through that. So the first part is knowing that it's a feeling. And if we know that it's a feeling, we start to know how to address our own feelings. I mean, granted, I have you know, abandoned daddy issues and God knows whatever else is going on in my life, but at least I can admit that those things are going on and be aware of it and try and start prescribing something to do about it. So the second one. And this one's really, really hard to wrestle with. I believe very strongly that awareness is greater than knowledge. Knowledge oftentimes makes us hurt ourselves. Oh, I should have known better. No, you shouldn't have. You didn't even know it. You didn't even know it existed. How could you have known better if, you, if this was a totally foreign concept to you? I would much rather you just be aware. I mean, when you're walking down the street, Try and be aware of your surroundings. Not just, oh, there's this lady in a blue shirt, there's this person there. I mean, I want you to look at all the things. Is the door open? Yes or no? I don't know. Okay, put your hand on it. Why? Well, I don't know, I just want to see if it's open. You know, is, this, is the street lamp able to do something different? Is there something in front of me that shouldn't be in front of me that I could move? You know, could I get a discount at the hot dog stand? Why would I get a discount? I don't know. Let's think of all the different ways. You know, don't just think of, oh, I can't get home from, you know, on time. I can't get to work on time. Even though, technically, this is exactly what I'm thinking of when I'm walking down the road. I'm like, how can I hack that sign to kind of troll people and make them laugh, but also make them realize that I can hack that sign? 
Um, by the way, real easy. It's just the default password, if it's even passworded alone, which most of the time it isn't. Um, we were teaching people to pick locks upstairs because sometimes there's locks in the way of a neat little keyboard inside of that. Really easy, very zen thing to do, <laughs> picking locks. You know, using your fingers in order to see. That's so zen. Like, I, I feel like really neat with those things. But, you know, Ian's walking through the city yesterday. What the hell's going on with that? Why is there a serial cable connected to it? What does it do? I mean, if you have your eyes open and you walk through the world, security's a really easy thing. Hey, how do you control the street signs with a serial cable? Cool, step one, don't put the freaking serial cable out where people can use it. <laughs> right, like you don't need advanced stuff. You don't need to go buy a firewall or something crazy. Like just don't do it. Bam, secure. You feel way better, don't you? Hey, this dude just can't just jack into it. Awesome. You know, you have all this crap in your pockets all day long. I mean, how many of you guys walk around with, you know, God knows how many lithium-ion batteries of stuff? Right? You can attack every piece of these things. I mean, this stuff is super easy to attack. And by super easy, I mean within seconds, any of the badges that you guys have that let you access into your facility, from here on the stage, I can read and clone. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. But it's so secure, beep. I'm like, yes, it is, beep. <laughs> and I get to walk in as you. You know, there's, there's all, you know, we have computers. We even have barcodes on our little tickets, right? Oh, hey, look at my ticket. Here, scan it. Boy, you should see how mad Ticketmaster gets when I put SQL injection inside of the barcode and it causes the whole database to dump and everybody gets in for free. Yay, warrior. Um, <laughs> You know, there's just so much of this stuff. Taking, taking cell phones, even a cell phone, I can put a USRP, which is a little defined radio, I can put it on one of those little funny drones that everybody's trying to fly around in helicopters, and everybody's cell phone here will get routed through my antenna. It takes about five minutes to set up. I mean, granted, five minutes is a long time these days. Um, but that's it. That's all you need. One blip, boop, boop, gone. All your, all your cell phones route through me. That's why it's so easy for the government. I mean, it's not like they're doing advanced attacks. They're doing really basic stuff. We just need to be more aware. You know, when you look around your office, right? Oh, yeah, that's my office. Oh, except, you know, I have a wireless headset. Oh, it's wireless? Yeah, that means somebody can listen in on it. You know, I have wireless phone. I have all these wireless things. You have to think it's wireless, right? Let's just start there. Meaning that it's right here inside of my hand, literally inside of my hand right now. And all I have to do is put it in something so I can read it. That's it. It's not real hard. And so the more we are aware of these things, the easier it is for us to defend it. You know, when we think of wireless stuff as it's going to hold things that are important to us, we probably don't want to just give it to everybody, right? We want to take whatever precautions we need, knowing that it's going to be floating around in the air uncontrollably to protect it. I mean, you can even hack parking meters. And yeah, this is, this is super fun for you guys. Trust me, it's not real hard. I mean, granted, Joe and a bunch of these guys did the really hard stuff of the reverse engineering, but as hackers, we like to help the world, so we really script so that anyone could just go click, and then it works for you. Because we found that we've tried a number of different ways to educate vendors on making their stuff better, right? We've had bug bounty programs where we're like, hey guys, we want to be responsible and tell you how this works so that you fix it. And they're like, well, that would cost us $20 million in development costs, so. And you're like, whoa, 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 hold on. Every single user that you have could get hacked by this. And they're like, eh, that's cute. But they haven't been. And then you're like, all right, cool, so the script gets released and a whole bunch of those people get owned and you're like, hey, you guys gonna fix that thing yet? And they're in the middle of really freaking out trying to fix it. You know, so we've learned over the years to be a little bit better with people, but being aware <laughs> kinda helps, you know. We're the only industry where we get to fight the big guys, right? Like, we're the only industry where I can sit on a stage as one person and tell Oracle to eat me. And, they, and the best they can do is bring their lawyers. And even then, they're probably not going to get anywhere with it. 
So we try. But if everyone else was more aware, it would get fixed much, much faster. Three, we have some really, really basic things to learn. Is that humans, and just humans, end up being the core problem for a lot of these issues. But my prophet of information security is a man called Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> Y'all have plans. Every one of you have plans. And the day that you get hacked, the day that some of this happens, all of your plans are gone. You may have companies that have these elaborate security programs, mystical treasures of things of blinky lights and racks that do super crazy anti-hacker things. Does it work? Eh, I don't know. Vendor said it does. That's like, you know, are you a good race car driver? Eh, I don't know, but I got a cool car. That means nothing. It really does. So we need to try and get to a point where we're actually testing these things. Make people prove it. I lived in Missouri for a while. When they say show me, they mean show me. Don't spend a dollar till you see it work. Because otherwise you're just getting the placebo. You're just getting that pill that somebody sold at Walmart last week because there was a bunch of cool infomercials where you got to see somebody get photoshopped and they went from big giant fat person to super little skinny person and it's probably not even the same person. But they kind of look the same and they photoshopped their face on it, right? Like that's what we're buying for millions of dollars is the like get skinny quick pill because none of us want to do work. And the more that we make people prove it, the better off we become and the less we spend. Finally, hack more. Oh, come on. Yes. Learn how to do presentations better. <laughs> Go to places where you can learn these things. I mean, how many of you think it would be cool to be able to pick a lock? That's awesome. Right, look at, that's like most of the crowd. How come y'all don't know how to pick locks? <laughs> Why? Did you forgot how Google works? You need the tools? I'll give them to you. I don't care. I'll, I'll bring down my backpack. You have everything in it. If it gives you one little stitch of inspiration to try and go do it. You know, there's places all over the city. That map is just hacker spaces in Manhattan. Just places that people go and pay $50 a month to hang out and hack stuff together. And that doesn't just mean computers, that means locks, that means social stuff, that means building things, it means tearing stuff apart, figuring out how a camera works. You wanna know how a TV works and you don't know? Go to one of those places and ask somebody how a TV works. You will be amazed at the 10 hours that you spend figuring out everything from circuit board design to what an LED is. And the more that we can dig into these things, the more that we can tap into that kind of Buddhist new mind that we had when we were kids, the more times that we opt to push the button instead of not push the button, the safer all of us will be. That's it.